Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Ventures. Hopefully it's not too windy out here, guys. I'm trying a new mic. Uh, I don't know how good the wind protection is, but I have a backup too, just in case. Um, so today I'm gonna do the new, uh, my new version, my, my 2.0 on my Chucky Hex. Now Chucky Hex came about because the smoking ape decided to call it that. So it just stuck for now. But uh, uh, this is for my own use right for now. Um, I had a problem with the old one, the old style. Uh, the old one used fishing poles, you know, like your, uh, uh, your fishing poles that you use for antenna hanging and stuff like that. And the problem with that was that every time I extended them, I had to put all the fittings on to hold the wires. Now, if you were able to leave those out, that's great. And I think they're actually a little bit stronger. I think they catch a little more wind though, but they're a little stronger than the tent poles that uh, I used for this build. So this build I use tent poles, uh, much like what uh, the Buddy Hex uses, uh, kind of the same type of deal. I don't, theirs look bigger than mine. I think theirs is the next size up, but they call it something else, but I think it's kind of the same thing. At least the, the concept on how you fold them down. It folds down real small. I'll show you all of it folded into the bag that I bought for it. The old one took too much time because I had to put all those pieces on. They weren't easy to put on because the poles had bulges at certain places that you had to get over. Then when you got it to the spot you needed it, sometimes it wasn't real tight. The ones I'm doing now, I printed everything. I actually printed mine for the for the forward two parts. I uh, I printed those everything in red. Uh, it kind of kind of makes you set it up that way. But it, it's when it's in the air, it's easy to tell which the front is because I'm using extra. Uh, uh, paracord across to make everything more solid. The problem with the tent poles, the smaller tent poles and stuff like that that I'm using is they're a little more wobbly and uh, the extra wire, the extra paracord takes care of that, which is pretty much how they do it and all the, if you look at the uh, the uh, site that I gave you guys before on how to build a hex beam, it's been around forever and everybody does it that way. Uh, so, and it's, the shape of it's really, really good guys. It uh, came out really nice, but uh, let's check it out and see how it performs and see if we can make some contacts. All right, guys, so, so far I already have this set up. This is a uh, Land Surveyor's tripod. My uh, brother-in-law gave this to me. I printed out this bushing here to make this nice and tight. This is my 25 foot pole. It's a flag pole off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the uh, description. Of a, of a similar pole. I don't know if this one's still available. And this, it just goes down to the ground down here. And looks like I dropped something. Now I did, uh, this one, I did drill holes in this thing to uh, make sure it doesn't come down. I've got it guyed up in three points out here on this, this deal here. I use this just to stop this because I didn't want it any lower. And as usual, we're out at the, uh, the soccer field, which looks like they're not using it for soccer these days. It's not mowed and soccer started, so maybe just not here yet. All right, let me get on with the build. I left this part out of the build as far as uh, timing because I can actually take this pole and I can put it in a, in a uh, antenna mast mount that I have for my hitch on my truck, or you can also do it in a uh, drive-on mount. So this is where we're at so far. Everything for the antenna for this hex beam is in here in this little bag that I purchased. It was like, I think 18 or $20 or something like that. Uh, it's got a little side pocket here. I'm not using that for anything. But when you uh, open this up, it opens up pretty nice. And then there's all the parts, the wires. These are all the elements, the spreader, parts to keep everything tensed and tight and then the top part here which is the uh, where all the wires go to all right I have changed all the wires to like an easy clip on so I just push that out a little ways clip it on tighten it up all right so there we are and uh, the only other part I have is this this is my original except I changed this part and used to have the u-bolts here and now you just slip the uh, tent poles now all right guys so i'm going to pull this up videotape some of this so what you really kind of want to do is grab and i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this but you want to grab 
one from opposing sides. And I probably can if I stand in the middle here. That keeps the weight kind of the same. And I'm building this on this five gallon jug just so that I can uh, reach everything. And contrary to what other people do, or what some people say, oops, there we go. I'm gonna put uh, 20 and 17 on and then raise it above my head, just because those are the hardest to reach, okay? So, it's all how you wanna do it. To me, that seems to be a little easier. I've only set this up like once, so it's not like I have a lot of experience with this. And I'll tell you guys what, uh, the reason these things are so expensive is there's a lot of work, uh, a lot of R&D, research and development. Even though all the info is out there, you're still trying to build this thing and make it sturdy enough to hold up to wind and stuff like that. And this is just a portable antenna, so, you know. Okay, so that went pretty well. Now, as you can see right now, these things are all over the place, right? So in the front here, usually you don't have anything across the front, and that's one reason it doesn't really stay as good, but each one of these you pull across. This was on that site that I told you guys about before, how to build your own hex beam. They talk about these, it's nothing new. You know, basically all they do is just go from wire to wire, or from element, or what do you call these? I guess from each each of the tent poles, I should say. How's that? And as you get towards the end, they should be kind of tight. nothing new this kind of stuff has been done forever on these things since they started building them and research and development stuff on them everybody has their own little way of doing it I guess okay now that I pull them all together now they're all tight we're pretty pretty level everywhere so that's good and I do have one other wire one other one <laughs> and I forget where I should have wrote it down but it goes on one of these and I believe it's in the middle right here like I said hey I've been trying to set this thing up for like three or four months now and between rain other jobs that I'm doing it just it just hasn't got done so I think if I remember right, I'm hooking to this one here. So that would be six, 10 to the 12 meter one. But I'm not sure about that yet until I, no, that's probably the next one up. Yeah, that one there. Now this one really ties things together, guys. It's pretty pretty sturdy now. Not as sturdy as my fishing pole one, though. All right, guys. So here we go. I've got the uh, bottom of it down here. Going up, I've got it guide three. You know, I may end up doing more. Let me pull back a little bit here. And there it is. About 20 something feet, probably 22, 23 feet to the bottom of the, uh, where the, um, where it mounts to the pole. You walk over here and see if I can get a little better view of it. it seem to be, over here seem to be a little bit better view. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this thing, a little scary to put up by yourself even though I had a guide I had a bunch of people talking to me in between so that made it a little bit harder but uh, there it is Good 
Barcelona, Spain. Kilo, Kilo 6, Uniform, Sierra, Yankee. Yeah, Lou, the name here is Chuck. Uh, you've got a great signal. You're like 5'7", five, 5'7 seven, five, seven to 5'9 at times. Uh, great signal from Barcelona, Spain. I'm glad to, that you picked me up there. It's good to talk to you. I'm a little north of uh, San Francisco, about 28 miles. Over. Yes, near in San Francisco. Near in San Francisco. Yeah, you're uh, you're about a five and one, five and one, totally readable. I have no noise right now. I'm uh, out portable on a uh, portable hex beam. How do you copy? Uh, good copy. I got to your station five and nine, five and nine. It's in November, month, in Mexico. Uh, running uh, five lines with an NFED random line. Okay. Yeah. Actually, you jumped up to about S2 there, S2. So that not a bad signal. No problem hearing you at all, except for when the cars drive by in the park here. All right, thank you for the contact. This is Kilo Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee. Anybody else? Uh, Victor Echo 6, Golf Charlie Mike. Victor Echo 6, Golf Charlie Mike. Good signal into uh, California. I'm out portable at a uh, little soccer park here in the town. QSL, you are 5 and 5 into Alberta, Canada. You, uh, you were a little bit louder there when you were talking to the other uh, operator, but uh, you dropped out a little bit. No, uh, beautiful signal. You're uh, full readable, no problem at all. Yeah, copy that. You are too. You're about a five and seven, and I'm pointed away from you. So uh, I'm pointing uh, northeast, so not quite towards you, but uh, great signal there. Uh, thank you for coming back to my call. No problem. Have fun with your little, uh, I heard you say you had a home-built uh, hex beam there, so uh, have fun with that. 7-3, my friend. The name is Greg, by the way. Golf, Romeo Echo Golf, and uh, like I said, I'm in Alberta. Kilo, Kilo 6, Uniform Sierra Yankee. Anybody else on the frequency? CQ, 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 CQ20. I had a Kilo Echo 8 Charlie, I think. Okay, maybe I heard that wrong. It was really faint there. You guys go ahead again, uh, KK6USY. Uh, good signal, you're about a five and three, five and three, over. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, ten, your tin watch is doing well for you in the dipole there. Hey, uh, thank you for the con contact. Uh, the name here is Chuck. I'm just out in the park running 100 watts into a portable hex beam uh, that I just put up in this. You're my, my third or fourth contact on. Thank you for the comeback. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, you came out pretty good. My wires need to be a little bit long. That, I'm using the, uh, the wires we use for, it's just leftover pieces of wire that I had laying around for making antenna kits for our coffee and ham radio antennas. So it's just pieces, I pieced them together if I had to, whatever. It just, they weren't long enough for our antenna kits. And our, our silicone wire seems to be, needs to be a little bit shorter than normal wire. So the velocity factor must be a little different. And again, I apologize if you guys were getting uh, wind in this, but hopefully it's not work. It's working okay. So it worked really good. And, and how cool was it? My first contact 
Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> That's right, Barcelona, Spain. I got a 5.9. I don't know if he was just giving five nines. I don't think he gave everybody five nines that I heard, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, I think. And my first, uh, I didn't get the guy, but there was a guy in the Caribbean. Uh, he was pretty strong. His, his signal wasn't strong, but his, but his audio was nice and strong. And I didn't mess around long enough to see if I could pick him up. I tried a couple times and then moved on. And then I met a bunch of other contacts. Uh, you, you probably saw those in the videos. I hope I included some of those to a couple other places. And uh, hey, it was a lot of fun. All in all, it works really well. I have to say, I, it's a little scary putting it up by yourself. Um, of course, as soon as I got out of here, it got windy. So, you know, you're putting it up in the wind. But I did have a guide out first. I put all my guys up before I put the antenna on top. And it took me about, I'd say, 40, 45 minutes to build it. But don't let that scare you guys. If you got a couple people, that would be faster. But you might want to make sure that you uh, click the bell and uh, subscribe because I've got the plans in my head and the parts. I'm trying to get, collect all the parts. I've got the plans up in my head already how to do this. I've, I'm collecting all the parts for it. But I'm gonna have another one that I'm gonna build later. I don't know when I'll get it done, hopefully before Dayton. Uh, but you'll be able to set that thing up in about 10 minutes. I haven't done it yet, but if everything works out the way I want to, about 10 minutes is all the setup time. It's gonna be pretty, uh, pretty cool. And I actually might market that one. I don't know, either through myself or through Coffee and Ham Radios. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe, uh, especially if you're into antennas and stuff, because that's what I do most of my, a lot of my stuff is antennas. And make sure you hit the bell. That way you'll get all my future videos. I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Everybody be safe. Hope to catch you guys in the airways. 73 all.